Boy, it's a beautiful day in Santa Cruz. I'm here in Wilder Ranch, one of my favorite mountain biking playgrounds. This video is about attaching your cleats to your clipless pedal shoes. I like clipless pedals. I've had them on my road bikes and mountain bikes, all my bikes since they first came out. Clipless pedals keep your feet on the pedals. They give you more control. You can pull up as well as push down. So I recommend them for most riders. But the thing about clipless pedals and shoes is, In order to get into your clipless pedals easily every time, you need to mount the cleats on the bottom of the shoes just right. That's what we're going to get into coming right up. What you're looking for when you set up your new cleats on the bottom of your shoes is to have a neutral position. By neutral we mean it doesn't cause any problems and it works properly. The problems you might have is if you put the cleat in the wrong place, you might have knee pain when you ride your bike. You don't want knee pain, you want to be in a neutral position, something that doesn't put any pressure or make it feel like your knee is being held in the wrong position. The other thing that you want to have is easy in and easy out. When you find the pedal, you click into the pedal and you click out of the pedal, you want it to be easy. If the cleat's in the wrong place, it can be harder than it needs to be to get in and out of the pedal. You never want to have trouble getting in and out of your clipless pedals. The first step is mounting the cleats to the shoes. I've got a standard road shoe, three bolt pattern, and I've got a standard mountain bike shoe with a two bolt pattern. You see four holes, but only two bolts go in the cleats. Which I'll show you here in a second. Um, but I also have, here's a, a shoe with four bolts. So you might have two bolts, three bolts, four bolts, but the cleats came with your pedals and you want to install them on the shoes first before you get to positioning them correctly. So on a three hole shoe, the cleats will look something like this with three bolts, usually three spacers with the bolts. And then it's pretty much just putting the cleat onto the shoe by screwing the bolts into the holes in the shoe. Before you do that, you should always apply a little lube to the threads. That'll make it so that the bolts tighten up nicely. And so that in the future, if you need to take the cleats off, which you will because they wear out, the screws will come out. They won't get frozen in there. They won't get stuck. You can grease the threads if you prefer, but oil works just fine. You do that on any cleated shoe. Those on this one, on the mountain bike shoe on the left, and on the road bike on the shoe on the right, road shoe on the right. And then you just install the cleats. And the cleats came with the pedals, so make sure you take all the parts out, look at it carefully, and make sure you're assembling it correctly. Take the time to start the threads carefully. Don't cross thread anything. Get them started, slide them in, and move the cleat around a little bit and get it sort of somewhere towards the middle, left and right and up and down to start. Just a rough positioning. If you want, you can put alignment marks or tape on the shoes to help position the cleats. Now that's a three bolt cleat. That's a protruding road cleat. See how it protrudes from the sole? And on this one we've got a mountain bike cleat. Or This is not a brand new shoe. This is a used shoe. Start by putting it in the front holes of this little movable piece in here. Sometimes on new shoes, these little pieces in the shoe will get will be stuck. They'll be basically glued in place at the factory. So you have to break them free. To do that, just stick a screwdriver in there and wedge it between the end until you can get it moving again. You just have to break it free. It's stuck to the insole, and if you break it free, it'll start moving around again. There's two choices for mounting the cleats. Here or here. I've found that for most people, you'd use the front, front holes. But you have the holes in the back if you need them. 
They have to do with positioning the cleat fore and aft. So here again, just make sure you have everything right. See how this one, well you see it better here. See how this has a separate piece underneath the bolts. So that piece goes on. And then these go on, they go on a certain way. See there's a recess. And the bolts sit in that recess. So you want to pay attention to the details and assemble it correctly when you put it on there. If you don't, it could loosen up when you're riding. And you don't want the bolts to loosen up or fall out when you're riding. So just like the road cleat, get this towards the middle. I'm just looking at the gap. And then somewhere around halfway up and down. You're just taking a quick uh, guess at where you want to put it. Then we're going to follow some rules to position it in a neutral position after that. So one thing about these road cleats, you don't see it that much on the mountain bike cleats, the recessed cleats. See how that sits down below the soles? So this is also called a walkable shoe because you don't hit this when you're walking. It's great for mountain biking and it's really good as a commuting shoe too to get this type of shoe with the recess cleat, walkable cleat. So the one thing that can happen with these bolts, even though they come standard size in the with the pedals, you can end up, like I did on this shoe, where I had to replace one of the screws. So you see these are the two screws that came with the kit and then I had to find another screw for this position. And the reason for that is sometimes, it's going to be hard to show you this inside the shoe, but sometimes if the screw's too long, it can stick up inside the shoe, create, well, you, you wouldn't actually see the, you wouldn't actually see the, bolt inside the shoe but it creates a hard spot in the shoe and when you're riding it feels awful that screw is sticking through and poking you right in the foot so when you push these when you tighten these screws up on the bottom of the shoe when you tighten up these cleat screws if you put your finger in there and feel as you tighten the screws, you'll feel if the screw is too long and it's poking through on the inside of the shoe. You don't want that to happen. If it does happen, do what I did and get yourself a shorter screw so it doesn't stick through on the inside. Once you've got the cleats installed on the bottom of the shoes, you think you have them somewhere reasonable in terms of somewhat centered fore and aft, somewhat centered side to side, just tighten them up so that they'll stay put. Because for the next step, you're going to try them out. And you don't want them moving when you get into the pedal and try to get out of the pedal because they'll make it harder to get in and to get out. With the cleats on, we can now put them in the neutral position I described at the start. There are two steps. First, we place them so that the balls of the feet are directly over the pedal axles, which is the center of the pedals. In order to locate the cleat right under the ball of the foot, you have to know where the ball of the foot is on the shoe. You don't have to get this perfect at first, but you want to try to get close. One way to feel this is by standing on your toes in your cycling shoes because standing on your toes puts most of your weight right on the balls of your feet. If you can feel it, mark the position on both shoes. If you can't find the position by feel, one way to find that is to get yourself some paint and take a Q-tip or a paintbrush and you tip the brush or the Q-tip in the paint 
so that you have a little dot. And then put that dot of white paint right on the ball of your foot. Then quickly, before the paint dries, open the shoe up completely and put the shoe on. And then when you take the shoe off, I could show you, you take it out and you have a transfer of the ball of the foot on the shoe. Well, you have it on the insole on the shoe. You can open this shoe up and look inside it and pretty easily see the mark to reference it when you set the position of the cleat. But some shoes are hard to open. So you can also use the mark inside the shoe to make a mark outside the shoe, which will be easier to see. Just look at the mark inside the shoe and then carefully line up your mark on the outside of the shoe with the mark on the inside of the shoe. And you'll have that visible for positioning the cleats in the next step. Now that you mark the shoes, you can fine tune and finalize your cleat position. It's almost ride time. To do this, click one shoe at a time into its pedal by hand. Rotate the crank so the pedal is fully forward and the shoe and crank are horizontal and next to each other. Now holding the shoe and crank level like this, look at your marks, whether they're inside or outside of the shoes, and make sure the marks are now centered over the pedal axles. If not, note whether the cleat needs to move to the front or to the back and by how much so you can make this adjustment in the next step. Most clipless systems include some float that lets the shoe move slightly so that you will automatically find a natural angle to hold your feet when pedaling. However, it's important to get the cleats close to the right angle when mounting them. Looking down again like you did before, now make sure there's clearance for the front of your foot. It shouldn't ever rub the crank. If it does, you'll need to move the cleat in toward the crank. Next, look at the back of the foot to check your cleat angle. A good neutral starting position that works for most riders places the cleats so that there is space between the heels of the shoe and the crank arms that's about three quarters of an inch two centimeters or about the width of an average man's index finger. If the cleat angle needs adjusting, note which direction the heel of the shoe needs to move in or out and by how much. A good idea is to put directional marks on the shoe so when you adjust the cleat position you can see which way to move it. Now you just have to fine tune the cleats to get the fore aft and angle adjustments right. I'm working on the red shoe because the black shoe was perfect. Loosen the bolts, move the cleat to the correct position, then tighten it again. If needed, you can put each shoe into the crank again to sight from above and double check the final cleat positioning. When you think you have the cleats right, go for a test ride. You should feel the balls of the feet directly over the pedal axles and there should be no knee strain. If not, you should be able to feel what fore aft or angle adjustment is needed to get over the axles or eliminate the knee issue. Fine tune the cleats until they feel right. Now, if you can't find a comfortable and especially pain free cleat position, I recommend hiring a professional bike fitter to help. Once you have your cleats in the right position so that you can easily put them back, if they ever move or when they need replacing, it's a good idea to mark their position. It's smart to always have a new pair of cleats on hand just in case you find out that yours wore out or maybe the screws fell out and you lost one somewhere. Speaking of worn out cleats, to make road ones last much longer, you can get rubber cleat covers. You carry them in your pocket or pack and slip them on for protection and traction when you have to walk. Like I said in the beginning, I really like clipless pedals, so I hope these tips help you set up your shoes and get out there enjoying your clipless pedals. If you have any questions about your cleat shoes and pedals, just ask and I'll be happy to help. 
or if you've got some favorite clipless pedal or cleat tips, please share them in the comments to help everyone out.